tu parles français ou pas? Un uh, petit peu, like not very much. Yeah, I know. And then Quebec, it's all slang and stuff. So I just learned like the the good words to get me out of trouble, like par grave, means like no worries. <laughs> <Mon chan>. <laughs> <laughs> Another another one that stuck out that I would say is just sweet beau. <laughs> You're like, hey, I'm beautiful. Like, hey, I'm handsome. We're, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. But, well, tell me more about yourself, like what you do. Introduce yourself to the people listening. And, and yeah, I'd love to know more. <laughs> for sure. I played in a band for about eight years. And that's where I learned a lot of my wisdom and learned a lot more than I thought I would, like just going out on your own and doing that and then i learned a lot about networking and people and everything and all that and then just kind of had odd jobs i was a vegan chef for a really long time too so i know a lot about like cooking vegan and then i was like a big fight against all the beyond meat and all that was coming in and i'm like we just gotta eat beans <laughs> and whatever so i kind of like clashed with that industry quite a bit so i kind of just took a break from that and then uh are you still vegan are you still vegan or no? uh no i don't like I, I'm a rule breaker, but I like my rules are vegan, but at the same time, I don't know, like I'll eat a bit of meat to like ground myself a bit or like, like I can use it in a spiritual way. I think, I think I'm like pretty connected with my food and all that. So intuitive eating. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Big time. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. It's like, you're, you know what you need. It's like, you know, you know. yeah, exactly. We, <clears throat> most times we don't realize how intuitive we are about what we need to eat and stuff. Like, more times than not, we end up eating foods that like we need that could like provide that sort of bit of cure or that relieve that part of the body or that kind of thing. And we just kind of do that subconsciously more than, and I try and like, I work on a project where I try and dissect that through astrology because astrology is in the body. So it's like a little project I have called eating with astrology and it kind of focuses on the, the body and then the whole, yeah, the whole concept is for the nine months you're in the womb, you, uh, you're going to be more nutrient dense in those parts and then so for those three months out that you're born into that like you're going to need more of those nutrients and more times than not when i like do people's charts or kind of diagnose them or whatever more times than not i'm like pretty accurate on their health conditions or like parts of their body that they have to work on and stuff it's very interesting mm, and okay fairly so new project but it's uh yeah something i've been working on for a while okay so this is interesting yeah. because i was actually thinking about this right before we started talking is that yeah you do astrology but you know and my listeners know this i've i've moved away from astrology i'm now in, in sky astrology which is, which is a new concept yeah. you briefly touched on this but i do feel like you have a different uh approach to astrology than most astrologers do right um definitely yeah so it's like the you focus from what i remember you told me last time is that you focus on more constellations and more like the mathematical positions of things in the sky right because astronomy and astrology should really be together yeah. they're, not, they're not anymore so that's why i like sky astrology for example it's a whole different paradigm and and just when you talked about the womb and stuff in sky astrology that we we call it the the zero experience not even house it's called zero experience so it's a, like i said different language everything yeah uh but it is a very powerful um space because it 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 says a lot about you even you know before you're born it's like almost like where you came from like what you're already kind of used to it's kind of like all the uh let's say you're moving it this soul is moving from it from another life from a past life into this life and it's that transition phase right mm -hmm. yeah absolutely yeah definitely yeah i like to i use astrology i think that there's a lot of knowledge in there and then you can cross-reference with like all kinds of mythologies and you realize that this astrological story is just being told so yeah i focus i focus more on like the knowledge you can gain from it more than just the transits or like a birth chart or something like that like i think that there's a lot of knowledge for like bettering yourself and understanding cycles and all that in astrology that's like very useful it's just like another tool in the toolbox of us of using astrology 
kind of thing. Right. What I think is, um, mm, I, I like the fact that a lot of people are actually waking up to this, that there's a, there are distortions and there are, uh, there's false information there. And um, I don't know what you think about this, but I feel like we need to kind of move away from saying, oh, I am a Pisces, I am a Scorpio, I am a this, I am a that, because there are so many other energies in the sky that sometimes even more potent than that, the, you know, the, the sun, where the sun was, what constellation the sun was in. Yeah, it could, ha it has a big influence, but then there are other things that I've seen that are like, maybe you, you thought you were a Pisces because there was another planet in that, in that experience, uh, pointing at an ability that you have or something. I don't know. Let me know what you think about this thing that I am, you know, it's like they, people tend to like focus so much on this, uh, or be like making it be part of their identity. Yeah, right? exactly. I um, well, I think that using astrology in that regards is good to know what your strengths are, like by knowing your chart and your sun signs and all that stuff. But we're born under the astrological wheel, meaning we're born under every sign. Every sign is present. Every star is still there in the sky when we're born. So our birth chart or our astrology is just kind of like this blueprint for this lifetime. And these are the traits that you are going to embody and like the energies that you're going to represent more than the energies that you are. Right. And, it, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and I use it more like maybe as a guideline and even yeah. for whatever type of lens you're using, the types of astrology, I think all types of astrology can be useful. And even in sky astrology, it's a lens as well. It's like telling you, okay, this is, this is kind of like what you're, I guess, guided to do, but it's not set in stone either. You can also, like you said, you like to break the rules. You can break the rules, right? Yeah. So yeah, because you don't want to put limits on yourself. Well, I'm just a Taurus. It's what I do or whatever. Like you want to. I just like to yeah. eat. Um, yeah <laughs> and be comfy and yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and then sometimes i do think it becomes like a self-fulfilling prophecy you know what that is like in psychology we use that term a lot because i have a background in psychology so i have yeah, yeah. all these like terms that put people into boxes and things that i was like I, I know we have to like kind of start moving away from those things but sometimes i i like using the terms because they're useful to explain what happens and the dynamics of like groups or people and this is a self-fulfilling prophecy of like you're told since you're born you're like oh my daughter is a pisces and then you're like oh i'm a pisces i'm emotional i'm this i'm that and then you wake up to the reality that when you were born the sun was aligned in aquarius and this is me that's why i'm saying that the sun was in the constellation of aquarius you're like oh actually that makes a little more sense and that feels more aligned and then you start like thinking well why is this all happening, right? And I do feel like this is part of a control system. And I was even talking about this with Austin yesterday because I interviewed him yesterday. Yeah. Um, and we were saying, yeah, astrology is is a big control system based on the Gregorian calendar. And yes, we can use this information to decode things like he does, but I don't think we should focus it on it too much to say who we are. You know what I mean? Definitely. Mm. And it's funny too it's the same thing like because i do numerology as well it's kind of like yeah and all that and it's it's one of those things where yeah like i'm not a fan of the gregorian calendar although i can like use those numbers and know how to like use it but i'm like i don't know as far as i'm concerned like the calendar is kind of just prison bars of this like roman kind of thing so it's you know so it's another way to box us in kind of thing and like yeah it's just a weird thing it's just funny being like an astrologer and trying to just be open-minded that and the same with like numerology just like yeah no the calendar ain't, ain't yeah. what it's supposed to be yeah exactly right so this is definitely a system in which there are so many control mechanisms right and it's like you can you can decode it like you guys do i love what you guys do it's so interesting i'm just like i'm starting to deep dive more into that and like oh that is really cool like what you guys discover and let's see what happens next and all that right to see how accurate this information can be but but it's already proven like with things that have happened in the past even how these events are so linked to to certain numbers and and uh and and cosmic events right and they yeah. play, the, the elite play with this information to create situations to keep the masses under the controls it's just crazy yeah definitely and i kind of my take on that too is because they don't have the same power we do and they need to do all these things to gain their power it's like without these they're powerless so they have to use every single word every single transit everything they can to try and manifest what they are manifesting kind of thing they I need it all where we don't you know we can do it any day we can 
turn into a portal any day. We don't need some fancy number or anything like that. Like mm-hmm. we're very powerful. We don't even know how powerful we are. And they have to do all that because they know how powerful we are. Exactly. Because they've lost that, that uh, I was talking with this with, uh, with Austin uh, about this the other day. And I retained <laughs> that from your guys' podcast is that we are more powerful and that's why they're stifling our energy so much because they can, and because we let it happen. But once yeah. you decide that you don't want that to happen, you realize that, you can do so many things that are just like so much easily obtainable, even in this matrix where everything is difficult and slow. And, and you know, it's like, just like, oh, you, yeah, don't exactly. have, you don't have your abilities that you have in other realms, but still you can do so many things. And yes, I remember you guys saying that. And I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense why they have to do all these things. And uh, wait, I was going I was going on. a, I was I forgot what I was going to say after this. Anyway, it'll come back if it's important. But <laughs> But I was going to, to somewhere else with this with this comment because yeah, I do think that this is a key thing that people need to realize is that power, like you said. It's like how powerful you really are. And uh some people might even say, well, you know, it doesn't matter because we're still in a fallen uh, system and whatever you do is still connected to the phantom matrix, et cetera, et cetera. But oh yes, here it is. There's a thought. So what I've been observing is that no matter what, it's like it we're still helping each other grow in one way or another. No matter to what type of thing we're connecting, if it let's say yeah, sometimes our energy goes to the phantom matrix. All right, yeah, that happens. It's that's just the way it is. But we're still helping each other uplift each other, and that for me is like one of my objectives here. I was just talking with uh, with my my dear friend Claudette about this, about how we're some of us are really here to ground that information that is kind of just everywhere and like just really bring it in in a very more like comprehensible way. And even if we have our filters and all, everybody has a different way of viewing the world. The way we impact each other's journeys, I think that's what's important here is to like ground all that and be like, okay, what can we do concretely here on this planet to create a, a better space for us to be here while we're still here because we're not going to be here forever, right? I don't know. What do you think about that? Like, Yeah, I think that we are all here to learn from each other and to teach each other. And when you bring in that awareness, you realize how much there is to learn mm-hmm. from every experience and every encounter and everything that there's more to learn and that there's like more dimensions to that experience and to like understand as well on many different levels kind of thing and yeah I do think that we are really here to learn from each other absolutely yes because I see a lot of things a lot of things of like oh you're wrong I'm right and oh we should all accept each other there's a lot of like uh, psyops as well but hey, I um, for me, it always comes down to as long as I feel good about what I'm doing and I'm helping people and I see the results, that's what's important to me. I don't mind if anybody else is judging me or, you know, whatever, or if things are false or false light or inversions, because I think a lot of people and I know some of my listeners have been caught up in this. Uh, oh, who is who is hijacked? Oh, who is spreading false light? Oh, let's protect ourselves. Oh, let's this or that. It's like, OK focus like you know it's like just kind of yeah you can be everywhere at at the same time but also be very present you know it's like I I think that's my thing and I feel like it's your thing like we're everywhere but at the same time we're very yeah present. very definitely present. and then even when you contacted me too because you're sharing all the fox stuff <laughs> and all like this so the <laughs> night before I was at a punk show like a punk rock show and there was like a little bit of an art exhibit there as well and I was like, oh, there's art over there. And I look and someone was standing in the way of this painting and I couldn't see what it was. And they moved and it was this giant fox. And I was like, whoa, the fox. And then you messaged me like the next morning. No way. Oh <laughs> yeah. my gosh. That yeah. is so crazy. Can you send me the timestamp when you saw that? Did you take a picture? Uh, I don't know if I have, I don't think I have a picture of it, but oh, uh, yeah. like try to like, get the time. I have a mental it. picture. It was like a pretty interesting fox. Like I really like stared at the art piece for a while. Yeah, I, I really would love to to know. Uh, yeah, the, even if you don't have the exact time, but it would be better if you did because. Oh, we're... true. Hmm? True. Well, it would have been like eight or probably nine p.m. my time, so that would be like four in the morning your time or something. Okay, I'm gonna write it down, and then if you, yeah, if you remember something else about that, let me know. Because yeah, it's. That we're we're checking this kind of a we've found some interesting things we haven't really 
looked up too much information yet because it's still very new but the people tuning into the the i call it the fox portal i don't know we just kind of opened <laughs> the portal it was just it's just like for people I feel what I feel just now is like for people to connect and we're probably going to be, be sharing more information about this with my, with my friend Shoban who is in Ireland she is a kind of like me and her started kind of started this thing it's like the story is that she was in a pub or some a restaurant I forget I'm sorry Shoban if I'm messing up your story but in any case she was at the, the toilets there they have a lot of stuff written on the walls and she's like oh I want to write something too and she's like what should I write and she's like okay she always likes to connect and see what comes through just naturally and she's like uh follow your intuition um or no trust your intuition follow the red fox and that's like, she's like, why did I even write Red Fox? And just like me, she had never even thought about much about Red Foxes before. And then I did a card reading, uh, like intuitive card. Reading. I don't do tarot, by the way. I always like to specify that because I it tears so many distortions in tarot. And it's like, oh, I have to always say it's intuitive card reading. But in any case, I pulled out a card with a fox or several foxes on it, but I was doubting as to if to say fox or fox is plural because in English you know in English is not really well I don't know if I could call it my first language I do feel more comfortable in English but sometimes I have doubts because I'm like uh is it like uh fox you know like fish and fishes you can't say fishes it's fish I'm like is it fox or foxes I'm like oh this is fox and I said fox <laughs> <laughs> and I made a whole thing about it in my head I'm like why was I so focused on that it was weird but that's okay you know like whatever and then she texted me I didn't know about her thing in the toilet or what I had no idea and then she texted me and she's like ah I got ear ringing when I was listening to your thing and the thing is when I open what I call portals in my reality I get ear ringing and I don't do you get earringing a lot? Oh yeah, sometimes like very heavy and and I know I know when it means something. I know when it's like the angels or some sort of change or something. Yeah. All right, I don't I don't I don't resonate with angels, but <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but, not, but I know what you mean. It's like yeah. it's like this thing where it's not it's not here. It's like another realm or something. And the thing is I get the earring to the point where I feel like I'm going to lose my hearing. Like it's just so strong and I've yeah, learned definitely. that I can actually even clench my teeth and activate it sometimes like when I'm in and like kind of like oh, this like, state yeah and I so I clench my teeth and and I get this huge and then it's boom it's like it explodes and then there's a thing that appears and it's like like AR like like uh, augmented reality like in front of yeah. me like it's superposed and I'm like looking at things and so when I, it, it, to me I was like oh this is like a portal or something and so she got ear ringing when she was looking at my my intuitive card reading and then she told me I that about the message and then from there it escalated and other people started tuning into it and stuff and so you might say oh you're just seeing red foxes because you thought about it but there have been some pretty crazy sightings of like a red fox a literal red fox in the middle of the day or people talking about red foxes whereas they never talk about them with other people that don't know what's happening you know and or dreams about red foxes whereas these people never even thought about that before and I'm like that is there's something there you know it's like we're making we're connecting the dots so that's why I want to know the timestamp. by the way <laughs> oh true <laughs> But yeah, next time you see a red fox, send me the exact time. Like, take a screenshot of something. Okay, for sure. Yeah. And then, <laughs> does it mean, do you understand, like, animal symbology? Or does it, like, the fox mean anything in that regards to you? We were looking thing? into that a little bit. We were thinking, well, the people that have resonated with this kind of share the traits of a fox. Yeah, I got um, the fox tail. Yeah. My hair. Yeah. Yeah. A fun, intelligent. Um, I would yeah, say, wise. I get wisdom mm -hmm. from the and then yeah. like uh, witty, and then there wasn't a cunning, but in a nice way, like not like in a mean way, like you're trying to, you know. But you're like you you know what's going on. But you don't say too much all the time. You kind of just be like, yeah, you're kind of reserved in that. And then and then once it's time, you're like, just to kind of you know, give all, all yeah. the information. It's because you know a lot of things. You just but people are sometimes not ready to hear what you have to say. 
So you kind of reserve that for yourself and you play dumb. It's like we play dumb. We laugh and we. And yeah, we're... definitely. Definitely. I feel like I resonate with the Fox quite a bit. Yeah. We laugh yeah. and people don't take us seriously and they think we're yeah. just goofy and that it just, what we're doing is, is not, it doesn't make sense. But mm, in reality, we're just like, I know, what, I know what's going on. Yeah, I'm we know exactly what's going on. You, you know, I'm just having fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. A little trickster energy for sure trickster energy i love yeah. that. yes that's definitely the fox right yeah so i found that connection myself i was like looking into the people that were tuning in i'm like yeah you're a fox you're a fox you're also a fox yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it's like this connection for me it's like um we were even talking about the grids and stuff and how we're like yeah. maybe like these little links but because it's different countries too we've got people from mexico ireland germany france myself and then uh, my friend in in um where where else was there was one more location i forget but i feel like there might be even more later on where we're gonna create this like really little cool fox map. grid <laughs> little fox grid yeah i don't know yeah. mm -hmm. oh this is so cool i love this i love that you saw a fox too that's so amazing <laughs> yeah and they always I'm, I pay a lot of attention to animal symbolism and, and like signs and everything. I'm always looking forward to and more times than not, especially when I connect with people or like make moves in my life or something, there's usually like an animal or some sort of like signal from the universe for me. Usually like it's kind of ridiculous how much it happens, but like, yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? That's, that's true for me too. I've noticed lately because the fox is not the only thing. And, you know, like I said, I've never really thought about foxes before or anything, but I've also gotten llamas with a few people and turtles, but it's a different kind of energy. And here's my take on it. It's like, there are like several, like, I guess, games going on. Right. And you decide like what kind of game you want to kind of jump in and participate and like, and you're like, you can be everywhere and nowhere at the same time. But like, and it's like, oh, you have these like these pockets of people doing different things and they have different energies. And so each animal represents that energy. And when you're connecting, it's like, oh, this is amazing. Oh, now I'm going to go over here and explore here. And that's what's so fun, I think, about this reality is that we can explore so many. The word that's coming to mind is flavors, you know? <laughs> yeah, flavors is a good word for that. <laughs> yeah, we're each like our own meal like we're each our own ingredients kind of thing and then together certain ingredients work better than other ingredients together right so like that's the whole compatibility thing but if mm -hmm. you're like if you're a good chef or whatever you can make any ingredient work with whatever right so like if you're good at the game you can you can make it work and find that right balance yeah exactly exactly so <laughs> That that's that's a I love the I love these kinds of analogies actually. <laughs> like yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it makes it more it makes it clear and practical for people, especially people that are new to this kind of information. It's like, oh, I don't you know, but you don't know what you're talking about, but then you relate it to something that's actually part of their everyday life, then it makes more sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> So, dude, I was gonna go on a rant about broccoli because it was like that was kind of a bit I had is like it's okay what if you're just broccoli like some people are like Pepsi some people are broccoli like you know like we all have our we all like the like Pepsi tastes good or people like the sweetness but there's nothing there there's nothing to benefit from it whereas like broccoli you know like you guess not everyone likes it but they feel like you know you eat it like you're, you'll get it good and then I did like a personality test and I did a couple where it's like, what vegetable are you? And I kept getting onion and I was like, oh, I'm an onion. But then that kind of makes sense. Like mm. many layers, deep and complex, healing, cut into me, I'll make you cry. You know, that kind of <laughs> <laughs> like, Shrek, like Shrek too. He's an onion. You, did you see the movie Shrek? Yeah. Yeah. He's like, he's like, yeah, you're like an onion. I forget what part that was that the, the donkey was saying. He was oh, like, does he? I think so. Yeah, I, I can't remember exactly, but that was it. Like, it's like, yeah, different layers. And then, yeah, I, it just, you know, well, you probably don't stink, though, do you? No. <laughs> no, that's that was one thing going vegan instantly. It was like body odor way down instantly, like started, oh. you know, like I don't have to use deodorant or anything ever. Like, yeah. I heard about I heard about that yeah like how it yeah of course food is just like that's why that's why we're actually 
aging as well in general just food is apparently not good for us in general like we should be breatharians have you heard about this yeah i'm so into this right now <laughs> yeah i don't eat that like i definitely eat less and like really deprogram myself for that like i, I do a lot of fasting and i'll like you know i have my eating windows and i like mm. really in tune with that stuff yeah sure. i mm -hmm. i do more like yeah it, it changes for me a lot but i do like having these moments of like okay i think it's time to like detox and purge and like you know like yeah. you know, do all the shit in my body it's like i'll do a fasting but i don't do those crazy ones of like a month i do the the longest i've done is a week and you know i'm like okay yeah that's that's good for now maybe later i'll do longer i still like food too much you know we're food addicts we're addicts. yeah definitely i really like food for sure <laughs> that's an addiction it literally is an addiction yeah. there are, there's books on this on how if we really train our body to to uh absorb the energy from the cosmos and the, well, the sun the air because our cells are self-regenerating we can do this but the thing is like we've just been so used to eating since our you know, we were babies and just think about it right it's like we we literally teach babies how to eat they're not they don't do that when they're born it's like not like that you know they they drink milk of course yeah whatever. exactly but yeah but then all the solid foods and stuff is like you really have to force them to get used to it that's not that's not natural <laughs> and then i even think about that's like slightly programming and like the whole meals per day kind of thing because that's like you know they tell us to eat more or whatever and it's just like it's and then like i do a lot of wordplay and stuff breakfast break fast are you breaking your fast or not so i always fast in the mornings and kind of let my body naturally detox or kind of complete that i like that yeah and now what i've done too is like yeah before because even in the media it's like for children as well in school i remember how they used to tell us Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And they would show you big pictures like, oh, eat eggs, eat this, eat that. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, I don't even feel like eating all that. But I would do it sometimes thinking that that was a good thing for me. And now I'm just like, okay, I'll just, I, I just have a, a coffee in the morning and then until maybe 12 or maybe sometimes even 2 p.m. Like it's, I guess this is called intermittent fasting a little bit, yep. right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I do. That's 16 yeah. off, eight hours on, you have an eight hour window to eat. Yes. And then at night, it's like after 8 p.m. or so, you shouldn't have anything really. And sometimes I break that rule, but, you know, like intuitive eating, right? It's like, it's like yeah, if exactly. I feel like I want to have some chips, I'll have some chips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can't like, yeah, there's, you can't drive yourself crazy. You gotta. Yeah, I think it's, yeah. a, it's a lot in the mind as well, right? It's like, if you, if, if you think that something is going to be bad for you, it's, a, it's kind of like the placebo effect. I'm sure you've heard of this before. Yep yeah it, it's how people they give they give people medicine and they're like oh here you go this is going to help you and it's like oh magically it did but it had nothing in it it's like it just it was you <laughs> exactly well that's like the saying too it's like a, a happy donut's better than a sad salad oh that's right. i love that and yeah. you know what i just like uh i don't know why i get like i got this image of a donut with a smiley face on it like oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like because okay here's a thought so I've been tuning into like these parallel realities or whatever you want to call it. I don't know where they're coming from, but people look like cartoons in them. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've been to cartoon land before. <laughs> yeah, and it's like I feel like there are people that connect to the like, certain characters a lot. And then when you tune into their energy, they show up to you as a cartoon character. I've had this happen where someone was like, they did something kind of mean and I was like, oh, whatever. And I just stopped talking to them. And then they showed up as a cartoon and then they were like, oh, you know, like it was an anime too. It was really cool because they had, you know, big hair, a kimono and stuff on. And I was like, okay. What, what? And then they were just like, but it was a telepathic communication. It wasn't even like uh, talking or anything, but I saw it very, very clearly. And, and it was like, oh yeah, but I, you know, kind of like, I'm sorry for what I did kind of thing. And, and then they bowed and all. And I was like, wow, that is really nice. And then I reached out to them and they were actually feeling bad about what they had said. So it's like, you know, there was something there that needed to be fixed and like, fixed. Well, you know, talked about, I don't want to say fixed because there's nothing to fix, but like talked about in the reality here. And, and I was like, I even wrote it one time. I was like thinking, yeah, that is strange that I connect to people this way. I wonder if there's a reality in which we are cartoons and I talked to a friend about this and they're like yeah I, I've seen stuff like this too where they people look like cartoons and to me I'm like 
Ah, oh, that's a confirmation. Yeah, that definitely. Yes, I read it. So like, this is true. <laughs> I'm trying to think of my experience. I've definitely been to a cartoon land kind of thing. It's kind of like this Neverland kind of. Yeah, I don't know. I've definitely traveled there. I've definitely flown around in Neverland before or whatever, for sure. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Did you see the new Doctor Strange movie? The one no. multiverse. Oh, you have to see okay, it. Okay, multiverse. Mm -hmm. There is a part where they actually are traveling through different universes, like very very fast and i believe there's i'm pretty sure there's yeah there's one where they're there they are cartoons <laughs> so it's like always like even with numerology and stuff you see this like uh like the the truth hidden in plain sight and they want want you to think it's fiction except it's not yeah exactly exactly so i even anything remember that no, mm -hmm. i was trying to think of a quote i used to say it was like anything created in this reality is real oh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah there's there's a reason why we thought about it because it's literally exactly. um, thought forms that are manifested and it's like oh this this is like this looks cool and then you create a, a cartoon or a movie about it but it's because it's real it's existing somewhere else you know definitely <laughs> Yeah, so I I totally agree with you. I knew we would agree on a lot of little things, <laughs> like ah, oh, like of, of like uh, what's going on in, in in other dimensions or other realities and stuff like that. Because yeah, I definitely felt from you that we share this in common that we like to be present everywhere, and at the same time, we're very present with who we are here and what we're here to do. <laughs> definitely. Sometimes I feel like I'm caught up in the other realms a bit too much and have the hard time coming back down to the 3D. I don't know if you have that problem, but then yeah, I, yeah. I I see it like how I've kind of been approaching it lately is like, what if I'm just a portal to those higher dimensions and figuring and approaching it like that so that I can bridge that gap yeah. from the 3D to those higher realms kind of thing. So they're really trying to figure out how to do that for sure. Yeah, that is so cool. I feel like everybody connects to different like universes because there's like, for me, there's like an infinite number of universes everywhere, like yeah. it's everywhere you look, but, and everybody has a different kind of, I guess, energy signature to bring to this planet. And some of us are connecting to these more crazy kind of like fun <laughs> places. <laughs> some people are connecting to the more like gloomy stuff but I feel like I've also had access to the gloomy stuff like a lot mm, I don't know about you but like I've seen things that are very dark and scary as well how about you yeah I've I've spent a lot of time in the darkness for sure like I, I know the dark very well and it's like for my own life and everything like, I don't regret it or anything but I used to like drink and party a lot and everything but I'm like glad I did that because like it made me understand the darkness and like the darkness of yourself and then like yeah those darker realms and i drank a lot because it was too like i was too caught up in the higher realms and i just wanted to be normal i just wanted to like block that off because it I wasn't able to handle it when i was younger or whatever so yeah but then it brought me to the dark side so i'm quite familiar with the dark side for sure I, I totally resonate with you on that and for me it was more like um drugs and stuff and one time i was like uh i would i just what just came to mind was a perfect example of uh, how we get like stuck in these in these realities sometimes that are just very gloomy you know like I said it's like but we get we get access to that to know what it actually looks like sometimes especially when you're I guess in in this very state in the state of mind sorry of like uh, not feeling good about yourself because I do think that whatever is projected in your hologram represents your actual state like within yourself and also your dna and everything so i remember i remember this time where i was at a, at a bar with a, with a guy and it was like tuesday it's like tuesday like what the f you know like we were we, we were on what were i think ketamine or i forget what we were doing <laughs> yeah something like that and then um and we were at this club like a gay club and all and it's like weird things happening and i was like I closed my eyes for a second like what does this place really look like and it was like dark and empty and super scary and I was like oh my gosh where am I and then this guy kept changing faces like he was like a, like a shapeshifter but you know like the the, the reptilian kind because yeah. we have abilities to shapeshift you know this yeah, yeah yeah but this guy was like a reptilian and um and when we were like we were talking and then at some point he's like telling me something something and he's like you know who I am 
and he turned into like this old man or something I was like oh my god like what is this like I, I felt like I was on a date with the devil <laughs> <laughs> That's just so horrible. I was like, what am I doing? You know, and then boom, like all of a sudden I decided, nope, I this is this is over. This is crazy. Uh, I don't know. I'm very like foc I was very focused on trying to please other people at, at that time as well, and not really focused on my journey. And then all of a sudden I just completely switched my perspective, and then this person kind of just disappeared from my life. But it was just really weird the way it was happening. Like it just like it showed me how um, how important it is to know where you're focusing your attention. You know what I mean? So. Definitely. And and then that like brought you awareness to the devil or whatever too, right? Like sometimes, like the devil is a deceiver too, right? And it's and it lures you in with like all that glam and that that glitter a bit. So like I don't know, it's pretty. And then the closer you get to the light, the more they're gonna try and get to you and stuff. Mm -hmm. So like that's usually when the devil shows up that's usually a sign that you're about to make like a very big turning point towards the light kind of thing and they're and they're there to stop you oh yeah that is, yeah because at that time i was definitely like uh, starting to make a lot of changes and then that was like a temptation you know yeah exactly almost, i almost fell into the trap I'll, almost but then also there was this really weird thing happening because this guy okay so here's the thing this guy actually had a girlfriend. So we were just hanging out. Nothing happened between us. I'm so glad nothing more happened between us. I'm just like thinking right now. I'm just like, oh my gosh, what was I getting myself into? But we were like, we were supposed to be like just friends and blah, blah. But I knew he he wanted to, you know, do more. And that then I started getting threats from the girlfriend saying, stay away from my guy. Stay the, like, I'm not even, I'm like, I'm not even interested, you know? But at the same time, I'm like, yeah, but I have been hanging out with him and stuff. So it's just like you got to be really mindful of who you give your energy to is what's coming to mind for for people listening it's like this is super important and sometimes it's like oh yeah you know i'm just living my life and uh it, it's it's fun etc okay yes but at the same time where is your attention and energy going right so it's like I, I feel like a lot of people are like oh yes just open your heart open your uh your you know heal people because we would love to, when these kinds of energies come in it's like you want to heal them you want to fix them you want to do yeah, something exactly. for them that's not what it's about first focus on yourself and then worry about you know <laughs> yeah. yeah heal yourself you'll heal you'll heal the world for sure mm -hmm. yeah because it's it is a projection of what's in here anyway so the more you yeah. work on yourself the more you will see that reflected i love saying this the more you work on yourself the more it's reflected in, in your reality that seems Definitely. external, but it's not external. It's 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 all with the, what's in within yourself, anyways. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes it's difficult, right, to differentiate be between the things that are really supposed to be there versus things that are actually brought in, like you said, yeah, be like the Phantom Matrix or the evil forces or whatnot. Uh, and that, but it always serves a purpose. That's that's my take on it. It's like if it happened, it was there for a reason, and but you know you're going to get out of it at some point anyways because of how powerful we are like you said yeah exactly mm -hmm. so i always take these these things as part of of our dna upgrades really it's like nothing to to be like oh this was a bad thing it was actually a good thing if you see it that way it's like it helped you hop on to the next level of the game <laughs> yeah exactly it's it's every moment everything in life is a chance to level up and everything and uh, that's kind of like how i approach it doesn't matter if it's a bad situation or not it's there to help us grow it's there to like assist us or get us on our towards our path more or to like let us know we're on the wrong path sometimes but it's mostly to do that to make sure that we're on the right path exactly exactly yeah so that's uh, also one thing I, I really like to say in my in my podcast always is like never see something as negative or something that you have to feel guilty or bad about because it it literally it's building you up to what you're you're here to do. So because I know people tuning into this, we're all pretty much everyone tuning into this right now is on that path of like uh, being of service to humanity. I know that this is the kind of people I'm attracting into my life. So that's what we have to keep in mind is that all the things that we go through, we kind of even decided that before, you know, we kind of, we could also be, veer off our path and decide to experience things to kind of just like, oh, because we like to, but there are certain things that I feel like are kind of, uh, I guess, in a contract or something that we made for ourselves coming here. Yeah. I don't know, what do you think about that? 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know. A quote that kind of hit me was I said to someone, I'm like, I'm on the right path. I'm just not on the right road. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> you know, like eventually it'll be, you'll veer and get back on that, on that good road or that highway or whatever. But yeah, yeah. you just got to go down the road that you're on. And, and then that's almost kind of like ending your, ending a karmic cycle. You got to, you got to drive, you got to finish that road so you can turn off of it or whatever. You got to get to the end of that road to get to a better road. Like the gravel will end eventually kind of thing. Yeah, and I like the the concept of like the internal GPS. I don't know if you heard about this, but I I heard it from like a it's a French quantum physicist who talks about this a lot. It's like there's like yeah, there's different timelines and and then sometimes you can uh there's like a roundabout kind of thing and he pictures it like a roundabout and then it's like these are these are like the the periods of your life that are kind of significant and then you can decide where you want to go. You can decide to go this way and maybe you veer off the path, but as long as you're still connected to that internal GPS, it's like it will bring you yeah, back exactly. because the GPS will know that you took a detour and it'll tell you, oh, now turn left. And then you can decide to, you know, just like when you have the GPS in your car and you're like, no, no, I want to keep going right. And it's like, okay, now turn left, now turn left. He's like, no. And finally you're like, okay, fine. Yeah, exactly. And if like you're, in, I think of that as like road trips or something. If you're, if you're down for an adventure and you take a wrong turn, you know, you might end up by like a beach or like a nice body, like a nice lake or something. And you'll, you'll stop and get out and enjoy it or something so yeah like the scenic yeah. route and the, yeah all that kind yeah. of good stuff so yeah there's all you can always turn anything positive and then it's not like this false positivity thing because i think like you and me we understand the darkness and the and the like degrees of negativity where we can still be positive and it'd be like a very real thing rather than like just hopeful or or like kind of like i don't know a lot of there's a lot of false positivity is a word i hear mm -hmm. where it's yeah but it's hard, kind of hard to explain, but I think we got the I, real I, positivity. Yes, I think a lot of people mistaken the the I guess the good humor and the laughter for like false light and thinking that we're all yeah. just about like oh let's just have fun and not worry about anything. But it's not about that. It's more of like like you said, it's kind of like shifting your perspective and seeing everything that happens to you as something that is still aligning you with your highest potential or your highest good, as long as you're tuning in to that internal GPS. If you're not, then, you know, you're a zombie and you're just letting your car being driven by the elite or the evil forces or whatever you want to call it. But if you're not, if you're in control of your car, then you can go wherever you want, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Even if it takes a couple of detours to get there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I also think there's like several destinations, you know, it's like maybe you were, let's say, contracted to, yes, be of service to humanity, but that can look like many different things. It doesn't have to be one specific thing that you're like, oh, that's destiny. And I have to do that. If I don't do that, then I didn't follow my path. No, I just think it's more like as long as you're doing what you felt like it was what you wanted to do here on this planet, then it's all good. You know, it's like that's what feels good to you here. You see what I mean? It's, it's, that yeah. makes sense. Mm -hmm. it does. I was telling Austin, like, uh, yeah, you know, for you and with me, it's like, we're good as long as we're like being of service to humanity. But if we had decided to be strippers, well, then maybe we wouldn't feel so good or maybe that that's not too <laughs> aligned. So we might be redirected, you know? Like, <laughs> 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 but then that's yeah. funny because it was like for my spiritual journey or to like really begin it was like through my friend who is a stripper but she's also like a, a herbalist but she, and like a shaman and does like music healing and is like a very spiritual person and she kind of awakened me to how spiritual i was and that like my spiritual potential or whatever so mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, you I know, think there's right, something can... with like that kind of work where it's like it's a liberal thing. They're very, they are very in control of their life, and then and, and a lot of them do see it as a game, and they they just like I don't think there's anything wrong with like yeah, just they're just comfortable with themselves and that, and they uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I know a lot of them that are like kind of shamans or spiritual people kind of thing. So really, that's interesting. Well, okay. Yeah. So you know, that's I guess that's just a stereotype. I guess of like how strippers. Yeah. Are. But yeah, I mean, I, I agree. We could have maybe some uh, enlightened strippers, but that's their frequency, <laughs> right? Like, I wouldn't resonate with that at all. So that's you know that's the thing. It's like uh, for me, that's contradicting, and that's just my this is my thought. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, do exactly. agree on the fact that people that are. They do, they feel like they're doing the right thing. And even if it looks weird to us or whatnot, hey, it doesn't matter. As long as it's aligned with who they really are and they came here to be, that's what's important. And they're changing lives and they're sparking people to reach their highest potential. That's what's important, right? 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was just saying I wouldn't be a stranger. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or, you know, maybe I was a stripper at some point in a past life. I don't know. But like, <laughs> not here. <laughs> not, not here. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. The whole past life thing. Like, uh, I also feel like I get glimpses of them sometimes. Like, uh, sometimes I get these visions of, like, uh, the 40s or 50s. I don't know if you resonate with this uh, era. But even before, yeah. like, yeah, Egypt and Atlantis before, yes. But, like, a lot of, like, 50s and 60s. Okay. Yeah. And that kind of sexuality picked up a bit or whatever. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's kind of when like the sexuality picked up a bit and stuff. Yeah, but uh, it was a very discreet thing, right? It was like a yeah. Yeah. So I feel like I carry I carry that energy a lot. It's like um, yes, people wanted to do things and they were sexy, but in a very discreet way. And I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, but what era do you resonate the most with, like in the moment? <laughs> the one that's not here yet like the future kind of thing oh! like, you know, where you don't fit in with the world that means that you're here to build a new one or whatever so mm, like, true yeah. yeah i feel like i don't even under i don't even understand the world that i resonate with <laughs> like it hasn't <laughs> happened yet but yeah I, I feel i feel like that kind of mm, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I get you on that too i kind of feel the same way too but like i, I love just like tapping into what might have happened before i like popped into this reality you know what i mean and like i, I resonate a lot with russia too for some reason like there's a lot of russian stuff that like i, I when i hear russian or music or something i'm like ah there's something there that's how you know it's like you were connected to that that place or that era it's like yeah. you hear or read something and it causes something in you you know it's like people sometimes they're like oh i have i've never looked at past lives because i you know i've ever done like um people think that they need to do like a past life what's called meditation or some somebody to look into that for them but you don't have to have anybody it's just like you just kind of know with the things that come into your reality and you kind of connect the dots right it's not that yeah that exactly i sat under a tree and the tree took me away and took me on this journey and showed me like the story of my life and then wow. sometimes to other parts from those stories show up either in my life or like in a vision kind of thing that like like i unlock another part of the past life kind of thing i've been yeah. uh, i've been i've been a, on trial as a witch many times for sure oh me too <laughs> yeah. I, i've definitely yeah. felt that witch burning well. for sure yes me too it's like yeah. oh you're you're yeah what we do is just like yeah we can't we can't accept that here and that's why we're kind of scared sometimes too of showing what we can do because of yeah what exactly or and and we we tend to even doubt ourselves too much because of that like i had these moments and still even today i think i have these moments of like oh um is, is this real what i'm thinking or seeing uh and and it's like you're scared to show it to other people because of that trauma from a past life where you were burnt to that. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You say that thing. She's a witch. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Oh, for sure. Yeah. So that's that's something important, I think, for a few people listening. Actually, just came to mind. It's like, yes, don't be afraid to show your gifts here because we're in a period and in in, in hum I guess in humanity or just in, in, in this um. In this lifetime, it's 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 okay. Like you you can just go for it. Some people might think you're crazy, and nobody's gonna kill you for it. You know, it's like they're just gonna say you're crazy. That's it. Who cares? Whatever they think, you know, that's not important. What's important is for you to express your gifts. So that that's I think it's it's a it's a blockage that a lot of people get need to get kind of rid of is that thing of like oh I'm I'm gonna be uh, punished for what I do kind of thing. You know? Yeah, definitely. I feel like when I got my when I really was stepping into my spirituality and the powers of that and everything, I really had to like block off a lot of people because mm -hmm. of the limiting beliefs being set on me that I couldn't be this person or that I couldn't kind of do that thing. And I just felt, and it goes back to how you're saying, like, be careful with like who you connect with or whatever. Cause I feel like once you open that connection, there's like a stream way there. So I feel like being unaware of that, when I'd open those connections, I might've like connected with some people that were kind of out there to be an enemy towards me in my like, spiritual thing or to challenge me in that so yeah like when i went through that i kind of had to block up a lot of people because i felt like there was these they made up their mind on me and it was a very limiting i was very limited just i could just being empathic just empathic i could just feel that those limits upon mm -hmm. me and it was like affecting me 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah you, you really got to stop worrying about uh, who are your friends or, you know, I feel like there's a, okay, so one person just came to mind and I don't know if he's going to be listening to this. I hope so, because you've got to stop attaching yourself to people like that and worrying too much about other people because definitely, yeah, and what they think or what they feel, uh, that's what what's more important. And this is going to sound selfish, but it's not really because when you consider it, look at it from a different perspective. Let's say you're worried about what this other person thinks and you're always trying to accommodate them. You're in a way also uh, stifling their growth or doing something that might not let him, let them learn a lesson. Whereas if you if you create a boundary and you let them go, they're going to learn something from that. So you're trying to save someone, but in reality, you're actually harming them in a way, you know? Yeah. And so, then it gets mm -hmm. like the opposite gets misconstrued as harm sometimes where you do trigger someone or you do kind of like be a catalyst in their lives and it's supposed to be this very positive thing but them like that reality shake or that just change or whatever like they kind of even though it, it was a catalyst for all this growth and everything they still kind of see it as like a negative thing yeah. when it's not right and then we get all messed up thinking that these positive experiences because they're people pleasing are actually stunning our growth and then these negative not even negative experiences but like these like yeah just harsher experiences or these elevating experiences they think that it was a bad thing even though they gained so much growth through it or whatever and that goes yeah. back to just being like having like gratitude and just having that in every experience exactly and I, and even if that person thinks that they will notice later on what actually yeah. happened because they will keep going on that path and they'll be like oh actually this was a good thing and and they'll be thankful so keep doing your thing and th this is what's important you know it's like uh because if you're constantly trying to accommodate people then it's like you're not helping them grow really you've got to just you know let them be you don't necessarily have to be mean to them either you know it's just no. about yeah sometimes it's you don't even have to say anything sometimes it's just like understood that it's like you know just let me, leave me alone, do your thing, and that's it. You don't have to be disrespectful, or because some people get really reactive as well. And I've seen this a lot, like on on Instagram and stuff, how people are attacking each other, and like, oh, if you say this about me next time, I'm going to do this, and blah, blah. that, you know, that that just shows how immature you are spiritually, literally, like you know. Yeah. So, yeah just go just focus on you and that's the other person either will learn their lesson or you will learn that what they did was actually accurate and you know everybody will learn what they have to at in divine timing if you want to say it that way yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah 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 so anyway i think that yeah that was a that was a good thing to say there because i've seen that a lot definitely a lot everywhere in the spiritual community of how people um yeah are creating there's a divide it's not necessarily a bad thing because i think that's also pointing people more towards themselves and focusing on like you know what they have to work on and maybe later we're going to create more like i guess unity or whatnot but i think this is a time of like dispersion it seems like to me because even since last year there have been these little pockets of groups like subgroups forming and stuff and people saying oh now this person is hijacked now this and that and it's like uh but I see it again, say like changing our perspective. It's a good thing because people are going to focus more within and and seeing what they can bring themselves into this planet. Until you know, uh, no, not until, but like uh, instead of uh, looking at up or even down at other people. And yeah, relying on other people for that. Kind of yeah, thing, yeah, because there were bigger groups before. I felt that I saw that, and now it's like more little groups here and there, or a couple of working together. But yeah, I think that's a good thing because it's 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 like focusing more you know and then maybe later we can put the pieces together and do something bigger like i was saying like these nodes of people like doing things here and there but uh I, anyway that's kind of the way i feel things um i guess evolving i don't know give me your, your take on that <laughs> yeah i feel like that's even like me and austin connecting in these past recent weeks have really elevated all of us that kind of connected in that group like we all instantly shot up because we all brought something new to the table we all had something to learn from each other and it really like boosted all of us up it was like just like yeah just like really sped up the growth and like of us on our journey and brought us like a new point very quick and mm. yeah sometimes we have to grow alone and sometimes we grow together and like it's through that growth from from being alone that when it like came that time for that like conjoining that we 
like we just shot us all right up and we all just like learned so much and made so much progress in like only a couple of weeks of like meeting these people and stuff. That is so crazy. Yeah, I love this, um, how we're coming together and, and it feels like we know each other from forever ago, although we don't, because it's the feeling yeah. I get from you, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And that's like a lot of people that come in our lives, but yeah, you just kind of see a vibe and like you're either like on the, like, you know, sometimes you're on a vibe and then sometimes it's like, yeah, might have known this person or like, but we've had enough lifetimes where I'm sure that we would have crossed like, I like there's a lot of us out there but at the same time maybe there isn't as many as we think or whatever like maybe that number isn't so high and so like we find when we're reconnecting with all these people it's like whoa maybe we do all know each other kind of thing yes i i just yeah. i just love that yeah absolutely and you know people people listening might think well we, that we are friends since a while ago but we're <laughs> not and we're resonating no. with a lot of things that we say maybe if maybe a few things not and that's just normal you know that's like we don't have to agree on everything but i just love yeah. how we can kind of tap into like what we think about and even the stuff that we don't resonate maybe it's just like yeah but you know but i still think that we're here to do something together in a way, even if we're not doing exactly the same thing, which is what I was saying to Austin the other day. It's like, yeah, you guys just, I saw it like, yeah, you guys connected and it seemed like you knew each other since forever ago. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just- so I've known him for like three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's so crazy. And so I lived in Oregon for like five years. Is that anywhere close to where you were li you're living? Uh, kind of, yeah. I'm like, I'm west, so I'm like north of that. I'm in north of Montana. Wow, yeah. yeah. So I've had this happen too, where I'm pretty close to places of people where they have lived or where they were born. And it's like, oh, wow, we were actually like, and you've been living there your whole life or did you move? Yeah, for the most part. And then, yeah, I don't know. I've been all over Canada too. So like my family's from British Columbia. So that's like where just above Oregon or whatever. Well, just uh, above Washington. Just above Washington. Have, you been, but, have uh, you been there? To, you've probably been there. I mean, for family. Stuff. Uh, I've been to, I've like flown through. I've like maybe, you know, uh, pop, drove through the town kind of thing. I haven't like been there. But I've been uh, to like Seattle. I've like driven through Seattle and Portland. You've been through, oh, because, oh, yeah, because I lived in, well, I lived in Ashland, and I was, of course, we went to Portland a lot, with because I was in, um I was doing track and cross country, and we went okay. to Columbia one time for, like, I forget what kind of race it was, but, yeah, there was something going on there, a certain, like, track meet, and, yeah, so that's so cool, right? It's, like, we're, like, maybe you were flying there, like, flying by <laughs> there one day. Yeah, I, exactly. Like, we cross each other, but we don't even know. Yeah we're there it's yeah exactly <laughs> did yeah. you ever do you ever have like paranormal experiences or anything weird like that because i know portland and, and oregon's big on big for that kind of stuff too did you ever have any weird yeah kind of I, things heard, happening? Mm, I heard about that but no and ashland ashland is more like a fairy tale kind of town <laughs> yeah it's very cute and very nice and it has at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival and stuff uh where i've had like more paranormal things or in mexico yeah, I felt oh, okay. yeah. that there, but uh, and not that huge, you know, because I know, like, I guess me, I've always just asked not to see things. I just don't want to see it. And I'm just like, no, if yes. you're there, I just don't know. I don't want to know. I know it's there. I know it's there. I feel it, but I don't want to see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The, the creepiest thing that happened, I guess, was one time when I was in bed and I felt a body next to me, literally, and the, the, the sheets were even like above me and i think it was my oh, grandma though like my grandma had just died and it was at her house actually too like we were with my, with my family there and uh, okay. yeah and then i heard like weeping like i heard crying and stuff and it's like oh my gosh like this is the creepiest thing and i, I was like super young too i was like maybe 10 years old so oh, wow. it was really creepy but um and i was like okay i guess that that needed to happen because there's a lot of family trauma so much so much i've yeah. been carrying so much of that i'm just exhausted definitely definitely some people think that you know what just what's just coming to mind is that some people think uh or yeah i've been i've been through so many things in this lifetime but there are people that uh, kind of uh, i guess underestimate their power in a way because they've also been carrying so much of what their family is going through and has gone through even in past lifetimes 
that is also a part of of trauma as well for us you know in this lifetime it's like absorbing all those energies and, and knowing what's happening and not being able to do anything about it is, is a is a big part of it so it's it's not about saying comparing yourself and saying oh this person has gone through this this and that i'm actually okay i shouldn't be complaining but you've actually gone through a lot yourself <laughs> you know what yeah. i mean definitely mm -hmm. gone through a lot <laughs> wounded yeah. healer for sure <laughs> yeah yeah and i feel like you've also even even in the physical and me too i've gone through things physically as well it's just like you know you kind of have to when you're a healer you have to see the darkness in order to be able to heal people if not then then you can't really speak from experience or or feel or know what people are feeling as well so, yeah you have to understand the process mm -hmm. like and sometimes it, yeah Sorry, it, sometimes it's you that goes through it, but sometimes it's also the what you absorb from your family. And there's yeah. so many things there. And I was just absorbing everything there. And it was like hearing this crying and all. And I was like, oh my God. Like that was very traumatizing for me at that time. And I understood it until later on how that was actually very impactful. And and I, you know, when you're young like that, you just you just, you just don't know. And and or some maybe some people do i don't know but for me it was just like why am i feeling this why am i crying right now when i haven't i don't have anything happening and you don't understand why and even my parents and maybe you probably resonate with this too it's like sometimes our parents don't understand our emotional reactions <laughs> that was me as a kid 100 percent. yeah yeah and that, in a way, is causing abandonment issues because when your parents don't understand you and they're doing their best, but yeah. when they don't understand you, you kind of feel abandoned with your feelings, you know? Yeah, wow. Well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that was a very, like, sentimental moment for me and for you as well. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So you a big virtual hug. <laughs> Felt it. Oh, I love that. You know, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I, I you know, somebody told me once that I'm a really good hugger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love hugs, you know, and, and, but I don't do it that yeah, often. Me too. You do? No, and like it changed over the past years, but me and my group of friends and everything, we're like, we're all, we're all big huggers. Hmm. And then I even saw like I was at a wedding two days ago and the my friend's partner the first night i met her when i said goodbye i gave her a hug and she's just like your friends like gave me hugs when like i just met them or whatever They're like she thought that was like so cool or so interesting or whatever mm. so like i kind of come from that but it definitely changed in the past few years like people are a little more hesitant of it kind of thing because of the whole covid thing yeah, no. yeah but the thing is like i used to be more into hugging people all the time and now i'm not just because of that thing we talked about where like be careful who you give your energy yeah to. exactly exactly yeah when you hug someone you're literally exchanging your energy and, and yeah yeah merging fields and all that and some people are also not really ready to uh i guess accept that energy that you have it's like they don't Definitely. they're not ready to appreciate it and not, not necessarily because they're a bad person but it's just that they yeah um it's just not a good idea you know and you you know what I yeah mean. exactly and then it's like the more we step into the light and then you do something like that they get blinded by the light too and i think they know that like i I get kind of like I don't know I get stared at a lot for sure like I just I can tell I'm like glowing a lot or like in my light because people will just be like whoa and then it's almost like this intimidating thing just because yeah. yeah it's like you're content with with being in the light or whatever yeah yeah that, that definitely and and then it can get sometimes very uncomfortable as well because when people look at you like that then you're like so do I look funny or did I do yeah, something exactly. weird or <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah or also you just don't want the attention sometimes you're just like just leave me alone <laughs> like oh thank you but no like, like we would say in spanish like gracias pero no <laughs> <laughs> you don't have spanish speaking people over there do you a lot no, a little bit but i find like the it's kind of what we were saying earlier like the quebec to the france french is kind of like the mexican to the spanish so it's I think that there's a little bit of similarities and whenever i have like learned spanish or like went to mexico or like just quick briefing i really picked up on it really easily ah that's cool but i like study language and stuff so i can kind of understand it i can kind of pick up on 
what they do or whatever and then it's all about talking to people and learning the local or learning more like the phrases and stuff than trying to pick up a book and it'll tell you yeah a little bit different yeah so what what phrases do you know any phrases in spanish by any chance or words or whatever comes to mind no nothing's really like coming to the mind i know a few there's none that's really like popping i remember i learned one like the other day but i don't remember it <laughs> So, for example, the ones that, that you told me earlier uh, when we we're talking about, like, what words do you know in French? You said, je suis beau. So, that I'm yeah. <laughs> in Spanish, in Spanish, be so, soy guapo. Soy guapo, G-U-A-P-O is the word. That's I'm handsome or, like, I'm cute. Yeah, it's like, so, so guapo or so guapo. guapo. You can say soy, soy bello. Bello is, like, beautiful, literally, but it, it sounds... It, you know, the thing is, in, in Mexico, we've got a lot of, like, uh, people, like, what's it called? Machismo, which means, like, <laughs> if you say something that sounds very girly, they think you're gay, and that's a bad thing. That's oh, okay. Not, that's very, yeah, like that in Mexico. So if you say soy bello, that sounds gay. So you can't say that. You say Yeah. Like, soy guapo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah and then what was the other one uh c'est pas grave c'est pas grave it's like it doesn't matter or something with c'est pas grave yeah c'est pas grave would be uh no importa or something like that it, i guess it depends on the situation but like i think it doesn't matter no 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 importa no importa no soy importa. muy guapo yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's what yeah exactly you gotta and that's that's just it when like if you're traveling like i've traveled a lot or whatever you you just gotta learn the languages that will get you out of trouble or just like the nice things I try and learn like, oh, it was nice to meet you. And then like, you know, like have a good night. Just like those, like if you learn like the nice words, because like, if you think about it, like if you go into like, I don't know, I was thinking about like this dry clean or this laundromat thing I go into to like get my laundry done. And like the people were so nice, but you could tell they didn't speak English, but they, they just please and thank you. Just nothing but like, and that goes a long way. So like, I think if you need to quickly learn a language because you're going somewhere, just learn the polite words. And then like that genuinity always like, works out in the end for sure yeah, yeah yeah exactly i agree and this this makes me think of how um this is for me it, it is important to know how to connect with people here if you're doing like humanitarian work you know and like being conscious of like what other people are thinking or feeling and not not putting yourself in this oh i'm an enlightened person who's coming to teach you everything it's more like Maybe, yeah, think about it that way yourself. But when you're talking to people, like really know where they're coming from and what they've gone through and, and what level of the game they're in, even though we're all playing our own game and we all have a different perception of the levels and stuff, I think, you know, but still in your game, never, I, for me, I never like to put myself as like, oh, I am better than you kind of thing, you know, like that's just, for me, that's just not the way to go. It's just like really understanding, like you said, it's like when you go to a country, you're going to try to learn the language and, and not put yourself like, oh, I'm French. You know, I'm just like, you know, here as a tourist, like serve me, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I, I remember like going to Italy and uh, the thing is I took Italian when I was in, in Mexico. And the thing is, Italian is so similar to Spanish. It's like, ah, uh, it's just, that's why. It's yeah. It's and easy. it has like, a, they both have a nice rhythm to it too. So it's like when they, when they have a nice rhythm, it's easier to learn. Like French has its own kind of rhythm. It's a different kind of rhythm to get used to but i find spanish oh, and mostly italian especially italian is just like yeah they just have a rhythm to it that's kind of like beautiful yeah grazie mille yeah <laughs> yeah so i would like try to use words here and there and you could see the difference of the, the service and restaurants and stuff and you would try to make an effort to learn the language and say oh, grazie and they were like oh you know a little bit you know at least you're trying for yeah here. exactly <laughs> yeah and, uh, because otherwise they would just be like i don't want to talk to you that would that was the reaction like literally and here yeah, too definitely. In france, yeah in france if you ever come to france people are so rude to to tourists it's like it depends <laughs> yeah it depends on the the region and but in paris like the paris region if you go to a restaurant and you don't even try they'll be like Yes, it depends on the restaurant as well. But for the most part, it's just like they don't really care much for tourists because they know they're just here to like, you know, they come and they go. It doesn't matter. So they're not here to build a relationship with them or anything. And it's just like, whoa. And they don't like they don't like them either. It's like this, <laughs> this French culture of like, ah, we're the best and people that come here are just, you know, here <laughs> to create chaos. So <laughs> So anyway, but yeah, it is important, you know, and so 
just bringing it back to the fact that it's kind of the same in this kind of work when you're working with people it's like you have to kind of see where they're coming from and then not necessarily adapt to them but like just be aware of it and and know when you have to say or not say certain things I think it's very important to bring into the awareness of anyone who's who's starting this work really because I know I've been connecting with a lot of people that are just kind of getting into it you know they want to express their gifts and they want to put themselves out there but it's like how do you do it right it's like just yeah uh just do it but also take into account that not everybody is on the same wavelength and you know you got to be it's what's the word um uh, empathetic or empathic uh I think yeah. yeah but at the same so don't lose yourself but at the same time make sure that you're uh catering to different types of people because you're going to have all people from all over the world coming to you and you know at some point I think it's going to grow and I got this really clear image of like right now maybe we're starting small but later on it's this is a training this is a training moment. yeah preparation because later on it's gonna be like people with boop 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 and you're gonna be like oh my god <laughs> yeah exactly coming at you from all kinds of angles and everything yeah. and then i think i think that even us talking about language connects to like yeah the whole thing where we're in all these other realms and we're doing all these like you know living in these other places or whatever and then just being able to communicate it to the more normal person or, or more like that 3d realm kind of thing is like it's almost like we have to learn that language because we know this other language from these like higher dimensions and stuff and i feel like during my spiritual spiritual growth and all that, that that's maybe something i struggled with was just like okay i'm trying to communicate something over here to the 3d and it just doesn't get translated well kind yeah. of thing and then maybe they see that oh you're like that whole kind of thing like oh you're not you're not willing to learn this language kind of thing yeah and some people like tend to get like a little scared because they're like oh that's too complicated i'm just okay and that's yeah. not it's like so for me it's like okay yes say what you think say what you feel in the, the moment like when we're doing this podcast you know we're just kind of saying flowing and things but then when you're working with people individually really tune into what where they're coming from and and, and um yeah just feel into the energy right not like stay in this like because i do feel like a lot of spiritual teachers say in this like oh i know this isn't that and then people are just like oh looking up to them like oh my god you're so amazing i don't understand really what you're saying <laughs> you <know? laughs> but it's like yeah I, some of us are here to like just be really in in that like i guess uh what's coming to mind is the belly of the the situation it's not like higher up in the higher chakras and like you know it's just like bringing it all down here you know yeah grounding so i have a question so you said uh from your calculations and what you do for like uh astrology and stuff what what are your your alignments <laughs> like in my chart kind of yeah. thing mm -hmm. Can uh, I i'm cancer i'm cancer sun mm -hmm. so that's like my emotional uh and like empathetic very intuitive very like in tune with like like the crab lives on the shores it understands the waves so it understands the ebb and flows when is your birthday? July 6th. July, July. I'm going to look, I'm just going to see what it, what it is based on, you know, the stuff I've been aligning with. Like, yeah, exactly. And I followed that page. I'm excited to learn that. Like, I'm very open-minded to all this stuff. Nice. July 6th. Uh, ew, my goodness. Gemini. <laughs> yeah, that makes, I have a lot of Gemini on my chart too. I am very Gemini. I'm very, mm. like, I connect with a lot of Gemini. A lot of my friends are Geminis and I, and I connect with that energy and resonate with that energy a lot. That's being able to go to the dark side. I can be a bit obnoxious at times. And it's like, it's like, I don't stir the pot. I tip the pot over kind of thing. It's like, I open it up kind of thing. And then. Okay. So here's what's coming to mind because in sky astrology, we get, we're getting rid of that. Like uh Gemini. Oh, it's like, uh, you know, there's like, okay. blah, blah. I, we were like looking at it. Like you see the sign, how it's like this. Right. And then it has yeah. a, the, it's like a bridge between and then there's orion in the middle as well you know you know of orion for yeah. sure yeah and yes you're conscious of orion and i think that that's a super important constellation that a lot of people just naturally connect with but is not present in mainstream astrology so it was like it's like creating this bridge of this these energies and that's the way we've kind of been investigating and experiencing how um because let me see one thing right here real quick because after that yeah after that is cancer but first is orion and then is gemini so 
before that you've got orion the orion energy of like um this like they call it the hunter or whatnot you know yeah but yeah but then it's it's also what well, we're seeing it as more like a bridge and then this whole thing about the crystal spiral comes to mind i don't know if you're familiar with the crystal spiral maybe not okay so that's like uh it's like the way energy flows and like where it comes from and all it's okay. like a spiral and it's a spirals out and then we're we've been just looking at how the the cosmos moves and everything and seeing that this could be something that needs to be more looked at because orion is just so neglected by society that it's just like oh it, and and then gemini is more like um that bridge right it's like it from gem from orion to cancer and yeah so you see that that thing right there and it's facilitating something it's not necessarily like oh you have to see it as like opposing energies or whatnot you know what i mean so yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. i'm also it's because i'm 15 degrees cancer and i think it's 14 and 16 degrees are serious a and serious b so the dog <laughs> the dog serious. star and the puppy star so i'm right in the middle i'm like a little teen teen dog teen pup which i think connects to the fox as well like <laughs> I think you know so <laughs> that's so funny. I've got Sirius in my Sky Astrology uh chart as well. Um, where do I have it? I think it's like in the <laughs> I have it in Gemini. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. I'm gonna show you just this little clip because and people listening to the recording won't be able to see this, but that's okay. But people looking at it through uh the the YouTube will see that's Sirius right there. <laughs> <laughs> It's like right in the middle too, kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, th this is a star that we've been connecting to recently with a friend of mine as well. She's been getting so many things about Sirius for some reason. And I think she's activating like personal codes because I do think that there's some stuff that's like more like collective and then there's some stuff that's more like personal. And you got to like, like learn to like navigate through all this information and be like, oh, okay, what's just for me and what's for everybody? And it get, you know. It yeah, gets definitely, definitely go through that. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm like, oh, but that's cool. She connected with me and I have Sirius as a star when rising when I was born as well. So, and Sky Astrology looks a lot into the stars as well, like what stars were rising. And I have a bunch of them. I've got Capella. Do you look at the stars at all? Like when- Yeah, I try to like, even just to understand, even though I use like tropical astrology, it's like, I still use the stars and constellations to understand deeper into what the sun being in that energy, just more layers to that depending on what planet was in certain things like oh your planet was on this this means like yeah it, it, there's deeper meanings than just it being in whatever astrological sign it is because mm. they all tell stories and they all create archetypes of energies and everything so i think that constellations do have a more yeah it just gives you a greater understanding of the the energies that you're reading yeah yeah that's great i do feel like you have a more unique way of looking at astrology and i understood that directly like when you were talking to me the other day so that's pretty cool I, that's definitely a big thing for me at the moment the whole like uh, how planets align and all that and what's actually happening versus what mainstream wants you to happen yeah. wants you to think is happening it's not the same so you got to really look up at the sky and see for yourself instead of just listening to what, what other people are saying so anyways <laughs> exactly and then I, and then i noticed too doing like numerology horoscopes and that kind of thing a lot of times i'm saying similar things that astrologers are saying from reading the astrology so it's like maybe regardless of the truth or not we're just like empathically picking up on the frequency of energy and we're just using these tools to kind of like provide examples to why the energy is there but maybe we're more so picking up on like an, on like a higher level of energy rather than like it being from the math of reading the astrology too right like maybe there's more empathy or yeah empathic abilities to that than just being able to use the tools i agree yeah that's so true and that's uh that's also you know in, in sky astrology it's the same thing the same thing it's like okay so what are we observing but what also is happening with people individually and what is intuitively happening i think is really important as well because yeah, I do feel like yeah, a lot of people might be focused too much on the math or the things that we just observe here. But then there's also so many other things happening in the non-physical that are also coming into play. And it's just, yeah, this, wow. It's just like I'm getting all these like uh, feelings of like, oh, so many energies playing, you know, interplay of energies. 
<laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah, I feel it. You know, it's like we get these like little downloads of feelings or things that sometimes we can't put into words. I know what you you know you know what I mean. Yeah, exactly. That's what that's the whole language trying to communicate from the higher realms into the realm that we're in, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're here to ground things, right? Do you have any, do you have any placements in like Taurus or Virgo or anything like that? Um, I have, yeah, I, th I have a like, I think my Jupiter is in Taurus. Ah, that's a big planet. That's a big, yeah, yeah. But a lot of my like, I'm I'm born in like a generation that's supposed to like be very abundant. But then a lot of my astrology is like, oh, you're you have that like inner abundance. You have that like inner wealth. You don't have the physical wealth to reflect how how wealthy you are inwards, kind of thing. So I got that like Bob Marley mm -hmm. wealth more than that. Uh, uh, yeah, manifestations. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. But yeah, it's, but still, it's like this is grounding, right? Do you do um? Do you look at the, like the North Node, South Node? Yeah. So where where is your north node and your south node and according to your Pisces is north node and Virgo south node. Ah, there we go. That that see, I asked you about like yeah, Virgo. Yeah, I said Taurus or Virgo, right? So yes, yeah, south node. Yes. Yeah, I don't have it. I don't have enough grounding for sure. I'm more fire and water, so I'm like more <laughs> water. <laughs> I think there's yeah, there's definitely something there where it's like, yeah, you're you're here to ground that 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 energy that's like all over the place kind of thing, kind of like me. It's like, how do we do that, right? We find different I think it, I think it's almost the opposite. I think I'm here to take that grounded energy off the ground. Cause I don't <laughs> think I'm I'm not a very grounded person. So I think it's about transmuting that 3D to a higher consciousness kind of thing, or mm -hmm. transmuting it to a higher mm -hmm. dimension. I feel more the opposite, yeah, where I'm here to take it off the ground more than. Mm, okay i see i see your perspective yeah what i'm saying is like about when, when we talk to people you know it's like yeah in that information that's the way i kind of see it is i guess it's a different perspective but uh but I, but i yeah i understand what you're saying it's like yeah um <laughs> you don't want people to stay in the matrix <laughs> no i'm here to help them break free for sure exactly but that's why like the way i see it it's like we're here to bring in our information ground it and teach people to break out of that in a way not necessarily to okay. Stay there. okay yeah that's what i was so it's to both say. take it out ground it so that that can then be elevated so yeah it's the yes, full exactly. and then they mirror it's the mirroring of them like they're both those mirroring each other getting in the present and then yeah oh yeah wow. so the gemini the gemini yeah just, there we go oh like this right like oh, yeah okay. the mirror as above so below and then yeah <gasps> yeah yeah that's <laughs> i love that <laughs> one thing that i found interesting with the air signs is gemini has the two libra is the scales has the two and then aquarius is the two rivers they all have the two in there and i find that very interesting with the air is that they're able to flow between yeah are you familiar the with the biodynamic farming concept uh maybe is that like biometric waves kind of thing well it's or... about like how uh in ancient times people used the what was happening astronomically because you know how ast yeah. astrology i know i know that with like i know you're supposed to plant seeds like a couple yes. weeks before the moon because it brings up the water before the full moon and then it's supposed to sprout at the new moon and all that yeah i, I know a bit about it for sure yeah so that's what it's all about it's like when you, you've got you know the as above so below is like aquarius and it, that's like and then you, uh, so i'm i'm still looking into this myself even you know how how biodynamic farming works and stuff but i do i do resonate with the fact that if you look at what's happening up above up, up above you can work better with, with what's happening in the earth and sometimes you know the water it's like you have to like let it like really like sink you know before you do something else and then and then it starts sprouting and you got the airy sign that's like oh there's the you know it's coming out it's springtime and it goes like this and then you got the yeah. sign that makes it literally that that symbol of like a sprouting flower kind of thing you know yeah so it's all linked the the glyphs are all linked to biodynamic farming really yeah so and then even just understanding like and how i said understanding astrology and the cycles and understanding as the cycles of life and everything astrology really does tell the tale of like a seed planting and growing and and being harvested and all that like it really connects mm -hmm. to all that like it's 
the seed gets planted in Capricorn and that's considered when it's the darkest. Mm. And then it's like, then the water raises up in Aquarius gets the water. Mm. And then the spiritual, it gets that like last spiritual birth in Pisces before it enters the surface in Aries. Mm -hmm. And then it begins its growth. Mm -hmm. And then by cancer season, it is the, it's green in Taurus, like Taurus, the cow eats the grass and it's the green. And then in Gemini, it like expands its branches and then cancer season, you begin to see the fruits. Leo season, the fruits become plum and colorful. Then Virgo season, you harvest the fruits. And then Libra, it's like the one it's also connected to like the wine press and stuff. So you you mm-hmm. do what you will. Where does this what do we do with the fruit? And then it like begins its process over kind of thing. So yeah 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 yeah. so it it all has a meaning right it's like i I love how this is like intertwined and everything so i yeah and um and it's a different perspective right because i do feel like a lot of that like ancient knowledge has been kind of lost in in the the path you know of like uh of all the control systems and everything it's like and how astronomy was separated from astrology and all it's not the same anymore no definitely not yeah ah uh, so anyway i do feel like we're bringing in some ancient knowledge in a way you know definitely think- we're we're unlocking something that's like it's already there it's just about unlocking it <clears throat> mm-hmm. yeah and that's the way this 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 planet works really it's you know you can zoom in and zoom out i was saying this with austin to the other days like i like to zoom in and out it's like okay what works for this planet what works in the in the higher realms what works here it's like you have to kind of it's like like we were saying earlier about being everywhere <laughs> you know like yeah it, it's a it's a it's it can be a little tiring but it's a lot of a lot of fun <laughs> i would say yeah exactly <laughs> wow this has been really amazing i think we've been going for like almost two hours now oh my god <laughs> really <laughs> I think it's time to start yeah. wrapping it up because I was like, yeah, ah, yeah, yeah. usually I don't go for this long. You know, I oh, well, nice. yeah, I will. I've had a few where it goes like for two hours, but that's like about the limit. I'm like, yeah, people don't necessarily want to listen to two hours of podcasting. No, and it wasn't, it wasn't just like me rambling though. It wasn't one of us just rambling the whole time either. It was like a nice conversation. So it was very, yes, it's been yeah. beautiful. I, I love this. And it's just, like I said before, I feel like we've known each other forever. So it's, yeah, for sure amazing to connect with you <laughs> definitely yeah so is there anything else you would like to say or maybe like a, a word of advice or something you would like to add for the, the ending here just to kind of wrap it up <laughs> i was thinking yeah. one thing that popped in my head is like and it's kind of connected to this lion's gate or just trying to understand that is like with like the heart is like sometimes our heart gets turned to lead which only gives us more lead to transmute into gold oh so like sometimes we get we get put through more to for us to experience more so oh, if your heart's been yeah. feeling heavy you know it's just more lead that you can transmute into gold wow okay so i'm gonna just give my perspective on the whole the heart thing and like the emotional side yeah. because uh from the sky astrology perspective we're still like, when we look up at the sky the sun is still shining in cancer okay so yeah yeah you you've seen that too well, I would just I would understand it. it's probably similar to like Vedic. I'm pretty right. sure Vedic astrology would be in Cancer right now as well. Yeah, maybe, but it's you know I still like to separate yeah. because it's not the same. Yeah, definitely, the definitely. Same, even the degrees and everything is like not that. But accurate. but Cancer is still Cancer is connected to the it rules the breasts and the stomach a bit, so it's still kind of connected to the heart. Well, that's the thing. It's like the emotions and what you feel within in yeah. yourself, in your heart. I feel like there is definitely a lot of emotional stuff going on. And maybe some people will think, oh, we're already in, in Leo season. Some people might think, that. I think so, right? And in, in, in like Western astrology, I think we're already in Leo or something. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but it's the sun is still in Cancer. So there is a lot of stuff that there are a lot of things that have uh, come to surface right now for a lot of people. So really take your time to acknowledge that and feel into it. And I love the quote that you just said, because yes, we put ourselves through these situations and it's like to help us jump onto, ju- jump onto the next level of our personal growth. So I think this is a perfect time to focus on that. And later it will be Leo season, you know, time for action, time for like having fun or when, I don't know. It's like the energy I feel from Leo is like, yeah, fiery energy. But like right now, 
for real, what's happening is that there is this really emotional uh, energy coming through for for a lot of us, and maybe some people are going to be like blocking it. I don't know. What do you feel about that? I just uh, for me, it happens. yeah, I feel like there's been a strong emotional energy. Like it doesn't really feel like Leo season. It does a little bit, but that's kind of how they all. The closer it gets to Leo season, more Leo energy comes in and stuff. So like, yeah, I do feel that Leo energy coming in, and yeah. I know it's definitely hasn't come anywhere to peaking to being peak Leo energy at all. And I do feel a little bit of that Cancerian watery energy still lingering around, and I've been feeling pretty watery the past couple of days. It was a pretty watery wedding I was at and everything. So I was like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, me too. Likewise. And it's like, it's like, but there are no borders in the sky, really. People have put borders there, but there are no borders there. So it's like, it's a, it's all intertwining. It's like, we're jumping into that season, but it's not yeah. quite there. And it's like, but really acknowledge that and just really kind of sink into it and, and accept it. And the more you, you kind of sink into the energy and not resist it, the, the more it will flow because maybe this is a little like an ebb. Maybe you are got to like accept the ebbs and the flows of this journey. Maybe we're in a little bit of an ebb but then it's just gonna be amazing i feel like an amazing energy is coming in for for this month for some reason it's like uh hmm, like uh like oh i'm free you know i like i i don't need to worry about uh what other people think about me or uh the relationships that i just kind of maybe had to leave behind it's like yes i will cry for them now but i will get over them this month is like a month of like just do you boo you know like <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely that's like and that's stepping more into the leo energy but it's through that yeah. emotional intelligence and the understanding of the ebb and flow of cancer that you're able to be that celebrity in leo too right like you're always leading mm -hmm. the next sign to the next so and then sometimes like yeah we might get put through that emotional little bit here this last little bit but that's just it's all preparation it's all for something greater so that we can handle the good emotions too exactly because yeah. sometimes it's tears of joy sometimes it's you know it's not just yes because yeah. we can be like we, we were saying earlier the the constellation everything is there's so much there's so many energies to consider anyways and even in your personal chart or sky it there's it's going to be different but yeah. um yeah so it's like just acknowledging what, what you're really feeling now that is just it's it's okay you just really accept the emotions because I, I think a lot of people tend to be like oh no that's negative but emotions you can't no. really classify emotions as negative or positive i think i don't know i don't yeah. i 100 agree with you on that thank yeah. you I mean... <laughs> yeah the, the, yeah, yeah there's many there's many flavors of emotion and, Flavor. and yeah and then people they just think of it as this one tone thing oh i'm emotional it's like no you're feeling many you're feeling many layers and many dimensions of feelings for sure absolutely i i Many love colors. this conversation yes yeah. i love this conversation thank you so much tj like uh, uh, yeah, yeah thank you for having me i'm glad we connected yes me too so yeah. we're gonna wrap it up uh and uh thank you guys for listening if you heard the whole thing i mean yeah you're obviously part of our tribe as well and <laughs> thank you for being here so i will see you guys again next week or maybe not because i'm on vacation soon i think oh this is the last episode before i go on vacation for a little bit so but i'll be seeing you guys in you know a short time yes i will do another podcast episode by the end of the month probably so but yeah thanks for tuning in and yeah have a great day or evening or night wherever you are say goodbye tj bye <laughs> Bye. <laughs>